Oil extraction has not only caused environmental damage, it has generated increased poverty in already impoverished nations. And it has triggered human rights abuse. Ruthless dictatorships are sometimes a partner in the extraction of oil. Nigeria is but one example. Those countries that have oil or other forms of minerals actually do worse in their development than those countries that don't have oil and don't have minerals. They have higher rates of malnutrition than many of the non-oil countries. They often have very surprising rates of infant mortality. They often have extreme levels of poverty. So a country like Nigeria, which has been living off of oil since the 1960s, has an overwhelming percent of its population living on less than a dollar a day. Within the period Nigeria was producing more oil, statistics show you that about 70% of the people, even today, live below the poverty line. 70% of the people. And we're talking of a population of over 100 million. So poverty level has actually increased with years of oil production instead of going down. You visually look at the Niger Delta and you see the fishing areas have been destroyed, the land has been destroyed, there's oil seepage everywhere, there's pollution everywhere, you can't drink the water, the ways people used to live have changed. And it's a very dramatic, visually dramatic result that you can see after 30 years of oil exploration or even more actually in that area. In response to the human suffering resulting from the pollution in the Niger Delta, Ken Sarawiwa, a local poet, writer, and businessman, organized the Agoni people living in the Niger Delta region to seek justice from the oil companies and the government that allowed the environmental devastation to take place. The Ogoni are a fishing and farming people. They have lived in a very fertile area that produced most of the food that was eaten in the Delta proper. Shell found oil in the Ogoni area in 1958. Since then, they found about six oil fields in an area that has the highest uh, population density in Africa, which is about 1,500 uh, people per square mile. Ken was extremely effective in organizing against Shell's activities in Ogoni land. He founded the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, Mosop. And Mosop really was a very effective organizing group at a time when this was pretty much unheard of in the Niger Delta region. This made Shell, which was the dominant oil producer in the Niger Delta, very upset. As far as we know, Shell started lobbying the Nigerian government to do something about this activist group that was uh, beginning to really uh, put pressure on the oil companies to do things differently and draw attention even internationally to the environmental damage. I do not want any blood spilt. 
not of an Ogoni man, not of any strangers amongst us. We are going to demand our rights peacefully, non-violently, and we shall win. Yeah! A memorandum was written in May of 1994, apparently sent from the internal security forces in the Agoni region to the Nigerian military. The memo stated, Shell operations still impossible unless ruthless military operations are undertaken for smooth economic activities to commence. MOSOP's efforts to protect the environment and human rights were evidently an obstacle to Shell's oil extraction operations in Agoni land. In the ensuing months after this memo was written, several Agoni villages were attacked, killing villagers and destroying homes. I think it was a military punishment for the Ogoni people to teach them a lesson, I presume. Ken and several others were arrested then tried in what I think is internationally recognized to have been a kangaroo court. Together with a number of other minority rights activists, he was executed by the military regime. Shell Corporation uh, was there during the trial. Um, people protested all over the world, begging Shell to stop the execution. I think that if she had really made more effort to intervene on behalf of Ken Sariwa, he would have still been alive today. Ogoni Day in 1993 was the most uh, exhilarating experience for me. It was wonderful to see a people who had uh, been docile for so long. It was good to see fear uh, no longer a part of them and on that day when I saw the large number of people streaming into Bori from their various villages I really felt a sense of fulfillment. I, if I had died the day after that I would have died a very happy man indeed.